morning, everyone. I'm so happy to see all of you once again on this another Sunday. We thank God for how He has been blessing us. We thank God for Him keeping us safe and keeping us healthy. We know that God is able to do all things and we just keep trusting in him and keep praying to him and believing that God in his own way and in his own time is going to bring this virus to a stop whereby we can continue to go back <clears throat> to living our normal lives. So we just ask that you just remain faithful and we just thank all of you for tuning in, all of you that are in uh, other states Thank you. We want to thank you for your continued donations. We just ask that you just continue to support us. And at this time, we're going to have our call to worship. We're going to begin our service. So sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord of all the earth. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. Give unto the Lord thy glory. Do unto his name, bring an offering, and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him for all the earth. We're going to now have a selection coming from our male chorus. Oh, uh -huh. 
morning. Thank you, choir, for giving us a selection this morning. You need to be lifted up. You need to know that the Lord Jesus Christ has given his life that we might have full life, enjoy life, have life in his richest form. So we thank them this morning. We're going to move on with our service. We're going to have our scripture and our prayer coming from Deacon Jonathan. I'll be reading the first book of Psalms. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the, in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the river of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chair, which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the uncongregation of the widows, the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. May we pray. Lord God, our dear Father, we thank you for waking us up just one more time, my dear Father. We ask you right now, my dear Father, continue to lead us and guide us, my dear Father, in your way. Bless our dear children, my dear Father. Bless the elders, my dear Father. Bless the sick, my dear Father. Continue to lead us, my dear Father, in your way, my dear Father. Right now. All in your name. Amen. 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 We thank Deacon Johnson this morning <clears throat> for giving us scripture, giving us in prayer. And we thank you this morning for being with us once again. And we just ask and invite you that you just continue to be with us and give us your support as well. This morning, we come on this third Sunday in the month of October. And the Lord has continued to be good to us. And we thank God for all of his goodness. And we thank God for keeping our members together. And we just thank God for how he has blessed many of us uh, those that have been in hospitals that you know, they've come out. Uh, we've had a few that had surgery and they have went through the surgery very well and we thank God for that. And we want you to know that God is able to take care of us yes. and he can deliver. All we have to do is just to depend on God and trust in God and know that God is able. Mm -hmm. This morning I'm so happy that because I could have been dead and gone, but the Lord gave me another chance yeah, this morning to be in the land of the living. Mm -hmm. And with all that is going on, he has kept me safe, kept me healthy. And I just ask that you continue to pray for us. And we invite you each and every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock to join with us as we come to bring you our service. And we come, you can see us either on Facebook or you can see us with um, YouTube each and every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. 
And then on Wednesday nights, we have our Bible study. That is done by home. And then on Saturday evenings, we have our Sunday school at 7 o'clock. That also is done by home. And then on Friday night, starting at 7, and run, going to 7.15, we have our prayer line. And we ask if any of you need prayer, just give us a call and uh, just tell us what it is that you want us to pray for you. But then we will pray for you over the phone. And that's myself, Pastor Williams, and Minister Davis. The two of us that's manning the phone lines every Friday night. And so we just ask that, that you just continue to join up with us and worship with us as we come to you uh, each and every Sunday morning. We come here to worship and to praise God. God who is able to do all things. Yeah, yeah. There is no failure in God. Okay. So we come and we worship and praise Him. And as we get ready to move on with our service, we're going to have another selection coming from our choir. And I'm going to come and bring you a word that the Lord has given me to give to you on this third Sunday of October. As we continue to move on, we continue to trust and our Lord to take care of us. <laughs> Thank you. 
change. Yes, sir. He can say. Wonder how many of you out there have been changed. Thank you. And you become saved, giving your life to the Lord. You know, that's what it's going to take for us to get through these difficult times that we have a changed life. Then we let the Lord come into our hearts and then he will make our lives more beautiful, more enjoyable, more enriched. Because he said he comes to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. I want to speak to you for a few moments this morning, coming from the book of Psalms, Psalms 42 and verse 5. Psalms 42 and then verse 5. There you will find these words recorded. Why are we downcast? Oh, my soul, why so disturbed in me? Put your hope in God, for I yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And I want to speak to you for a few moments coming from this storm. Where is your hope? With all that is going on today, all this uncertainty, where are you putting your hopes this morning? Let us pray. Our Father and our God, as we come before you this morning, we give you thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for just another Sabbath day. We thank you for how you have kept us another week. Then, Lord, we just ask that you would just continue to keep us safe, to keep us healthy. We ask, oh God, that, that you would protect our families and our loved ones. Then, Lord, we ask that you would remember the sick that is a little stuff membership. We ask, oh God, that you would remember our young people. We ask, Father, that as we go through this life, day after day, facing all of the uncertainties that is going on. Lord, we pray that you would just shower us with your mercy and your love. Once again, Father, we just ask that you just continue to protect us. We ask, oh God, that you would just bless our country, bless all those that are being hit by storms. We ask, oh God, that you would Bless those that have been suffered from these hurricanes. We ask that you would bless those that are out west who have lost property, lost their lives from these fires. Then, Father, those that this virus, those that have been sick with it, those that have lost many loved ones. Lord, we just ask that you come to them today. But, Lord, more than anything, we ask, oh God, you would allow them to find a virus, a vaccine that will kill this virus where we can re return back to normal living. Yes, sir. And Lord, we just ask that you just protect us until then. Keep us safe. Now, Father, as I stand before your people, you bring a word. I ask, oh God, that you use me. That they might hear what thus saith the Lord. In Christ Jesus, this is I. Amen. And amen. Psalms 42. And in verse 5. Where is your hope today? How do you go through tough times as we are facing these tough times today? What do you do when you come up with situations that are so bad that you don't know what to do? I say to you this morning, put your hope in God. We put our hope 
and a lot of other things. But I ask that you all to try to put your hope and trust in God this morning because it is he that is going to bring you out. Today we are truly living in tough times. This year, 2020, we have seen tough times like we have never seen before. This COVID-19, this virus, has brought this entire world to its knees. Many have lost loved ones because of this virus. Violence is at an all-time high. Racial injustice is everywhere. We have health experts trying to find ways to come up with a, a vaccine that will kill this virus. It has taken lives, millions of lives, of people all over the world. It has even caused our economy to crash, put millions out of work, put families through unimaginable hardship. We are living in some difficult times. Yes, and we need somebody that can give us some hope. Yes, hope. We trust our friends and look to them for help. We look for them to uh, give us some help and they can't help us because we find them going through the same thing. Yes, I say to you this morning, if there ever was a time that we need to turn to someone that is able yes, to take care of us. It is now. Yes, it is. And the one that we have that we can turn to in this difficult days is the Lord yes, Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Natural disasters coming from every angle, destroying property and homes and taking the lives of many. Uh -huh. We struggle to find answers to do what must be done in times like these. Yes, sir. But the Bible gives us a simple answer. Should we lose hope? No, I say not. Mm -hmm. Because all we need to do in times like these is trust in Almighty God yes, and sir. pray for His grace yes, that He will take care of us. And all that you need is to know how to go down on your knees and to call on God when you get into trouble. Mm -hmm. When we say hope, what does hope mean? Hope simply means this. We have the firm assurance from God yes, that he will do as he has promised. When we look at the Bible, the Lord has said time and time again, if we would just turn to him, if we would just turn from our wicked ways, if we would seek his face, if we would worship and praise him, and if we would allow him to come into our lives, yes, he said that he would give us life, give us life more abundantly, and he would bless us in ways that we could never imagine. I dare you to try it this morning. I dare you to give that situation that you're going through, uh -huh. give it over to God and that you've been wrestling with. And every time you try to fix it, it only gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you would just turn it over to God, yes, I dare you to try and right. just give it to him and then step back and watch God work for you. Yes, you see, I know for myself, because I've tried it. I've tried it when I've tried everything else, and everything else has failed. And every time that I've tried it, the Lord has brought me through. And all you got to do this morning is try him for yourself. You might be going through things, losing your house, your house is up for foreclosure. And you said, how can I have hope when my house is up for foreclosure? Put your hope and your trust in God. And God will see you through. You see, I know what I'm talking about because not only have I tried it, I know many of my friends that have tried it and God has brought them out. Remember, that God has your back. Uh -huh. It does not matter how desperate your situation might be. Yes, God is able to bring you through. He promised us that when the way gets tough, mm -hmm. if you would just call on him, 
he would come and see about you. Okay. Can I get somebody to say, yes, he will. Yes, he, he will do it. Yes, he will. If you just call on it, the Lord will come and see about you. Yes, I remember the Hebrew boys who, on the king Nebuchadnezzar, who prayed and Nebuchadnezzar didn't like the idea because they were praying and calling on their God. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego because they prayed to their gods in times when times were hard. What King Nebuchadnezzar did made a fire in the furnace. Mm -hmm. and the Bible said that it was seven times hotter than it usually was. And he threw these Hebrew boys in the fire in the furnace. Mm -hmm. and do you know what? God watched over them. God brought them out. And the Bible says that somebody stood by and looked in the furnace and say they the king put three in, but when they looked in, they saw four. Yes, that fourth one was the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, and you yes. see, the poor Hebrew boys found that they were in trouble and they called on their God. And I say to you this afternoon, if you just call on your God, mm -hmm. God will come and see about you. Just like Daniel found out when he was also uh, caught up praying. And it seems as though the devil doesn't want us to pray because when we pray, we are calling on God who is able to bring us out. And Daniel was praying to the Lord and the, uh, one of the king's servants saw him praying and went back and told him, well, I saw David praying. And didn't you put out a decree that no one was to be praying? Well, I saw him praying. Him praying to his God, Daniel was put in a lion's den. Have you ever been put in a lion's den? Well, David was put in a lion's den, and David, when he was there, he didn't fear for his life because he knew that God was able. He prayed to the Lord and asked the Lord to deliver him. And do you know what? The next morning, they went to the den and found that David was still alive. I want you to know this morning, church, you can depend on the Lord. Okay. Whenever you get in trouble, whenever you have a situation that you don't know how to handle, you can just trust God. I declare that he will come and see about you. Mm -hmm. He's done it time and time again, and he will do it again. If we could talk to David this morning, David would tell you, he was God's, he, God, the Bible said that he was the apple of God's eye. God loved David. God blessed David in many, many ways. And one day, David committed a grievous sin. David had all that he wanted. They, God blessed him. He had all kinds of blessings. And it seems as though when we have everything that we want, we seem to want more. And one day, David sinned. Because of David's sin, the Lord punished him. And David found that he was, had lost his spirit, had lost his, his drive to worship and to praise God, the God that had done so much to him. And have you ever been to where you have lost your spiritual happiness and you, you don't feel the joy that you used to feel and, and, and you feel guilty about what all that you have done? Yes, and David felt so downhearted and so guilty because that he had sinned against God. When we look at the 51st Psalm, we see that God hears the cry coming from David. And David cried out and said, God, have mercy on me. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Yes, David needed to, to be able to walk and talk with the Lord again like he used to because now that he found himself guilty of sin, he didn't find that closeness with God like he used to. And so many times, church, when we fall out of grace with God, mm -hmm. we don't feel that joy like we used to feel. You know, you used to stand in the kitchen and wash dishes, and the Spirit would come on you all of a sudden, and you sit there singing and praising God, washing dishes. Well, David didn't feel the joy that he used to feel. And he said to the Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Uh -huh. I used to get up in the morning, I could feel your presence. I could feel that you was with me. But now it's gone, and I desire to have that feeling once again. Yes, you miss that feeling that you used to have with the Lord. 
And only the Lord can make you feel like you're on fire when nothing else can. And David, when he prayed to the Lord, the Lord restored unto him the joy of his salvation. Uh -huh. David walked with the Lord the rest of his days. We need to know this morning, whatever our situation may be today, there is hope. I want you to know this morning, you don't have to lose hope in your situation. It doesn't matter how bad it is. You've tried everything that you knew how to try, and seemingly nothing seems to work. Give God a chance. Let him show you that he can straighten that situation out. Doesn't matter how bad it is. Just turn it over to him. We know that there's someone who holds our tomorrow yes, in his hands. And we know this morning that God is able, he's able to do all things. All things. Paul said in 2 Corinthians verse 4, we are troubled on every side, every side, but not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, mm -hmm. but not forsaken. Uh -huh. Cast down, but not destroyed. Yes, it is by God's grace and by God's mercy this yes, morning yes, that we have all hope, hope. in all situations. Yes, whatever you do, no matter how desperate you might feel this morning, and whatever you're going through, God has unfailing love. Uh -huh. Love that will sustain and keep you. Yes, all you have to do is to trust in Him. Yes, my hope is in my Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, my hope is all in him. Yes, and I have never been forsaken by him. He has promised that he will keep us. He has promised that he will deliver us. He has promised yes, that he will watch over us. He has promised Promise. that whatever your situation is, he will bring you through this yes, morning. Yes, My hope is not in what is going on in the world. My hope is in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, Won't you put your hope in him this morning? You will find that he will bring you out, yes, whatever it is that you're going through. I dare you to try. Right. I dare you to trust him. Yes, I dare you to just to try to get on your knees and tell him all about your situation. Yes, and just give it to him and let him fix it. How can I give what I have to him? Just give it to him in prayer. Tell him about it. When you finish praying about it, get up and walk away and just know that God is going to fix it. Stop worrying about it. I know that's easier said than done. But if you let the Lord handle your situation, you can trust in him that he will bring you out. And you will have the victory. Because your hope is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Where is your hope today? Is it in your situation that's about to destroy you? Is it in your friends? Or is it in God this morning? The one that is able to bring you out. We're going to get ready now to open the doors of the church. Maybe there's somebody out there who has lost all hope. They thought about taking their lives because they don't see a way out. But I say before you do something like that, let the Lord come in. Let the Lord have that situation. Let the Lord have control of your life. Give it over to him. This morning, maybe there's somebody that's out in the world and they want to surrender their lives to Christ. All you got to do is to say, Lord, forgive me. Come into my heart. Change my life. And make me yours. And I will serve you for the rest of my days. And if you do that and mean it from your heart, it's done, church. All it takes is for you to have a sincere heart. Mean it when you come to it. The Lord has promised that he will save your soul. Give you eternal life and be with you from that day forward. Is there one this morning? Just bow down where you are and say, Lord, forgive me. Come into my life. Give me another chance. 
Let me have eternal life where I can serve you for eternity. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We pray that when you are in a situation, whatever it might be, and you don't know what to do, don't feel that all is lost. Because if you just try God, and I know from experience, I've tried God many times, and he has never let me down. He has always delivered me. There are times he may not come through when I want him to, but if you give your situation to the Lord, you will find out that God will deliver. And as I said earlier, what is the meaning of hope? Hope simply means this that you have the assurance that if God has promised you victory in any situation, you will have victory. And if you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus, God has promised you eternal life. So there is hope where it seems like there is no hope. There is hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. May you have a blessed day the rest of this day. And I hope and pray to see you on next Sunday. Same time, same place. God bless. We're now going to have our benediction. We pray that you will have a blessed day, a blessed week. Now may grace and peace, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion and fellowship of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forever. In Jesus Christ we ask. Amen. Amen. God bless you.